The Canadian death toll from the coronavirus outbreak jumped by more than 50% recently. There are now more than 1,400 people infected with COVID-19. There are coronavirus cases in all 10 provinces. Meanwhile, COVID-19, or the novel coronavirus cases around the world, has now topped 300,000. One of the hardest hit regions lately is no longer China, but Italy. To talk about this more in detail is our foreign affairs expert, Lisa Daftari, joining me once again from Los Angeles. Lisa, why was Italy hit so hard by the coronavirus? Yes, you know, there's a couple of reasons why Italy was so hard hit. Um, you know, obviously they're not equipped to deal with the, this many, the number of, of cases that they've been hit with, but uh, it seems as though, you know, first of all, people live very close to one another, especially in the areas that it, that, that it did hit. Um, as you know, Europe is very different from uh, Canada or the United States, where there's a bit more space. If you've ever been to Europe and you've traveled around, you see that, especially in Italy, in the places where it's hit, not only do the people live in close proximity to one another, but there is an older, uh, the, the population is much older, whether it's people who are retiring there or um, people from all over Europe that are traveling there, um, or it might just be their second home, uh, their, their, their vacation homes that they were um, uh, frequenting when they were hit with the virus. The second reason is because by the time it hit, they did not have enough of a warning. They do not have the ventilators. They don't have the hospital beds. They don't have the manpower to fight this virus. There was a doctor, actually a doctor from Israel, who was in Italy helping to treat some of these Italian patients. And he said, we no longer even look at the patients who are over 60 years old. That's just to say that they don't have that much of a chance. I mean, if they do, they want to you know, gear their attention towards those who are younger and actually have a chance at fighting this horrific, horrific virus. So Italy has been very, very hard hit. The number there exponentially growing, whereas, you know, somewhere like South Korea, they flattened the curve right away. In Italy, that curve is still growing and it is exponentially, as I said, the number of deaths expo exponentially growing every single day. Yeah, and the Italian government is now banning any movement inside the country as the death toll has now risen to over 5,500. Now, Lisa, staying in Europe, Spain has moved to extend its state of emergency as the virus deaths are soaring in that country. Yes, yeah, so in the past few days, they also saw exponential growth in the number of cases and the number of deaths, and of course, in their ability to um, attend to all of these patients. Look, you know, the, the crazy thing about this virus, Helen, as you as you may know, is that you know the, the latency period is so long, and in a place like Europe where people are traveling between countries and traveling across borders and traveling for work and traveling for vacation. You know, they've spread this virus um, to, to many people before they even start showing any symptoms. And even when they do start showing symptoms, oftentimes those symptoms are very, very mild symptoms. So, you know, it, and, it, and it, of course, it, it has a very different effect on different people, depending on your age, your gender even, uh, your genetic composition, where you are, how you're dealing with it, your family, how well you're quarantining when you're, you know, how, how much you're moving about, as you said, in, in Italy, they have uh, banned movement within the country because once they put down the martial law, or I call it martial law, but the um, uh, the stay at home or stay, stay uh, quarantined kind of um, uh, ban, people started moving within the country. They went into places that are more comfortable, the countryside, et cetera, but they were spreading the virus as they were moving. So it's very important when they say stay in place, it means stay in place. It doesn't mean to go to your aunt's house or your cousin's house or whoever just to have more comfort or more space. It literally means to stay home. And I think people need to remember that right now. Lisa, let's talk about the number of coronavirus patients in Israel. It's passing over 1,000 now as 126 more people have been diagnosed recently. Yes, so Israel has, uh, this, or had, I should say, the issue of many, many, many people traveling. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's very common in Israel. It's a small country the size of New Jersey, uh, but people are traveling all the time, so coming in and out, and they also get a lot of tourists in and out of the country. But, uh, you know, many countries are looking to Israel as a, um, an example of how to deal with this virus in a very, very extreme, some would say, but um, effective way. Anyone coming into the country, whether you were traveling abroad and coming home or traveling to Israel for, for pleasure, are quarantined for 14 days, not allowed to mix with the population for 14 days. Um, and for the people who live there, the natives, they're not allowed to be out and about. I actually saw arrests happening on the streets when people were not uh, abiding by these, uh, by the quarantine laws. So, 
No, I think they're being very, very, very diligent in order to keep this virus from spreading. Again, a small country, people are living in very close quarters. Uh, it's like Manhattan, you know, Tel Aviv and other cities like that. It's very, very population dense. And for that reason, they need to be very extreme in taking the precautions that they're taking. How close are we getting to seeing a vaccine coming out of either Israel or where you are in the United States? Yeah, so uh, every day we're hearing um, that, that they're getting closer and closer. They've tried different um, combinations of things. A lot of people are talking about the malaria um, medication being something that could potentially work down the line. Nothing is out yet. Um, we were hearing that it was 16 to 18 months away. I think we might be a bit closer at this point. Look, I think as soon as they come up with something, people are going to be so desperate to ha actually have the trials on, on real actual patients that probably have a lower expectance, uh, you know, lower expectancy um, to live. Um, so I think once we have something, it will be people will be very enthused to have it uh, tried out. And, um, you know, I think this Dr. Fauci, a lot of people are looking to him as the foremost expert. Um, I was listening to an interview with him last night. And, um, you know, he says that they're, they're being extremely um, hopeful and, and, and diligent to get something out on the market as soon as possible. There are recent reports as well saying that there's been a 30% jump of coronavirus cases in Panama. Yes, Panama is another import-export city where the ports are open, people are coming in and out all the time, doing business, whether it's in the United States or in China or elsewhere. So it's, it's no surprise that, that that has happened. Now, Panama will probably risk being one of the countries that are not as well-equipped um, to deal with this. Um, you know, Panama, parts of it are extremely, extremely um, urban. They have the manpower, they have the money, they have, again, the imports, exports coming in out of the country, and other parts of it are extremely rural and um, will have difficulty getting the ventilators and getting the, the help and getting the, uh, the experts and the doctors that they need. So, you know, our eyes are on all the countries at Foreign Desk. I think um, we, we not only do um, a report on our website, but our daily email uh, keeps an eye on all the nations and the countries that are, are really we're looking at in terms of the highest rate of cases and of deaths, unfortunately. Lisa, several countries in Africa are now confirming coronavirus cases as well. Yes, yeah, so in places where we were not hearing of the spread of this virus, they are now spreading. Um, again, you know, Hal, you and I spoke about this for a while. This has been on on the map since November, or potentially before that, but we've been hearing about it since November. So think about all the travel, all the flights, all the different places where people go to and come from. Uh, and, you know, that's that's where it's spread. And again, because the latency period is so long, because, um, you know, it, 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 it manifests itself so differently in different age groups and different genetic groups and different parts of the world, we are hearing just now of how it's spreading to all of these different continents, all places on the map. I know in Canada, the, you guys had a 50% jump over the weekend. So it's obviously something to keep an eye on. I think in places where the cases are jumping so quickly and, and spreading so quickly, those are the places where we're keeping our eyes on most because we don't want it to get any worse. Now, remember when we say that there are 300 thousand cases reported worldwide that pro that number is probably three or four fold bigger than it actually is many people are staying at home with symptoms uh, thankfully if they're not in need of hospital care then they should stay home i know a lot of people here in the united states were going crazy they need to be tested they need to be tested if your symptoms are mild you can stay home you can stay home and keep someone else from getting that um uh, virus and, and we might not be able to handle it as well so Again, that number is probably much higher, but thankfully we're, de we're dealing with uh, uh, you know, many people in, in different parts of the world that can handle it. Let's make our way over to uh, India now. 1.3 billion people there have been put under an anti-coronavirus people's curfew. What does that look like? You know, there's so many people in India and so many people so far have said, well, it's, it's quite surprising that it, have, it hasn't spread like wildfire there. Um, look, they're taking the preemptive measures so that it doesn't spread there. Um, you know, it, it can go everywhere. It has gone everywhere. Why wouldn't it go to India? Again, you have a, a very large import-export community there. You have a lot of tourism there. 
um, of course, it, it could spread very easily. So, you know, when you have a, a curfew or you allow people to only come in and out at different hours, um, I know here in the United States, many supermarkets have certain hours where the elderly can come and shop so that other people who can affect them, because as you know, this is obviously so much more sensitive in older people above 60 or some people say 70. Um, so you, when you have a curfew for a large population like that, you, you basically, you almost are enforcing the social distancing to the best of your ability. Now, if only people would listen to it and not act cavalier and head out to the streets and to the supermarkets and to wherever they can go. Lisa, U.S. Senator Rand Paul has tested positive for the coronavirus, as has German Chancellor Angela Merkel and even opera superstar Placido Domingo. The virus is going after everyone. Well, Angela Merkel, I'm not sure if she's been diagnosed yet, if she had a positive test or if she's just self-quarantining because she was around people who did have it. But regardless, you make a very good point here in that um, no one is immune to this, right? So we have people in Hollywood, people in uh, Washington, D.C., people, you know, Trudeau's wife, I know, um, has it and is self-quarantining, Tom Hanks. So a lot of big names here. It only goes to show that no one um, can you know, stay away from this virus. It just shows that we must, we must take precautions from this spreading any further. We're looking at people who cannot travel to loved one's funerals. I know someone in, in the community here um, was not able to travel to the UK where his mother is. His mother was 60 years old, had no symptoms, got the virus and unfortunately passed away. And now he cannot attend the funeral. Um, there, we're having weddings, funerals, all sorts of, of important life ceremonies via Zoom and Skype and FaceTime. And, you know, it, it's crazy. It's truly crazy. It's, it's almost uh, like a bad movie that we're watching. But this is the reality that we're all forced to live. And uh, as you, you said, it's, it's on all continents. And I think all kinds of people, this has become the, 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 the normalizer, right? The, 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 the thing that makes everybody the same in, in, in some capacity. We're all going back to the basics. We're all taking that neighborhood walk because it's the only place we can go. We're all practicing self-quarantining. And, um, you know, I, I, we just hope that in two weeks we're, we're, we're talking about better things now. An Australian truck carrying toilet paper, Lisa, caught fire. I understand now why there's such a toilet paper shortage around the world. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, um, I don't know if you're, if you're following any of these uh, very, very... Um, distracting and, 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 and very appreciated uh, memes that are going around, whether it's about toilet paper, or about self-quarantining, or about day drinking, or whatever it may be. But um, yes, this is uh, uh, the commodity these days is toilet paper, and I still have not figured out why. But really, on a more serious note, I ask everybody to stop hoarding. You don't need to hoard. My sister is an MD. She's a resident, actually, at a a California hospital, and she just texted me right before we got on air that she's working without gloves in her clinic today because someone stole the boxes of gloves that the doctors have. I mean, she's putting herself really um, not only on the front line in terms of a doctor, but really in the front lines because people with the virus are coming to the hospital and they are forced to work without gloves, without masks, because people who should stay at home are hoarding these essential items. And it's just wrong. I mean, come on, people, let's get to to a place where we're logical, where we're humane, and we're not hoarding, where we're helping each other get through this very difficult time. At least China is doing a lot of damage control and rewriting the coronavirus narrative to distract from mistakes made at home. Yes, so Donald Trump will continue to call this the China virus for this reason, because the Chinese, where this virus originated, are rewriting the narrative and calling it an American virus, where uh, they're denying the fact that they they started this virus. Whether, and, and you can talk about for many reasons why this virus started, whether it was in a lab, whether this is biological um, warfare, or if it started by you know, someone messing around with bats or, or what people eat or what people spread. Regardless, this started in Wuhan, China. This is where, where we started reporting about it. I know at the foreign desk, we had our first stories about this, this, this very mysterious virus. I think you and I talked about it, Hal, on air here um, months ago. I think it was in November. Uh, and, you know, it continues. So imagine the Chinese being secretive or, you know, rewriting history. It's not the first time. Uh, it's very, very dangerous. It's, you know, it, it costs lives around the world because they were not um, straightforward about what was happening, about how serious this virus was. I mean, we closed our borders here in the United States. I mean, many, many people called Donald Trump out for it. They called him xenophobic. And now they're saying that he didn't work fast enough. 
I mean, look, regardless, this is not a time to be politically correct. This is the time to be factual. This is a time where we must get down to the basics. We must get down to the facts because lives literally count on it. Yeah, and find a vaccine sooner rather than later. Our foreign affairs expert, Lisa Daftari, joining me once again from Los Angeles. Lisa, stay safe. You too. Thank you.